Oh my gosh. What are you doing, doggy? <laughs> You are it's a like funny he knows dog. he's the star of the show. <laughs> Whether you've been living RV life for one week or one year, chances are in that period of time, you've probably had some pretty funny moments and maybe some embarrassing moments as well. So in this video, we're gonna get brave and share with you some of our most embarrassing moments. And you're definitely gonna wanna watch to the end because we have saved the best for last. The first story that we thought of when we thought about just embarrassing moments that have happened while RVing happened at a campground in Northern Wisconsin. Now, this particular campground was a like city run type campground, fairly primitive and lots of people that were there camping and it was just a great environment, very picturesque. So <laughs> didn't really think much of it when it came to having the dog come in and out when he would need to come in and out because usually <laughs> he's very obedient and he doesn't wander off or anything like that where we have to worry too much about him. So morning comes, the dog has been inside all night and he needs to go out. So. Here I am, literally in my pajamas, blind as a bat because I wear contacts, no contacts in, no glasses on, nothing of the sort, and decide that I'm just gonna take him out, have him go potty fast, bring him right back in the RV. Well, no sooner did I open the door to the RV than Alaska takes off in a beeline for a camper way across the campground and I do mean way across the campground because he just wanted to go say hi evidently to these lovely people that were enjoying their morning coffee so here I am barefoot in my pajamas like no support if you catch my drift there teeth not brushed I mean I am a hot mess chasing this white furball who at this point of course is just refusing to even pretend that he has a sense of hearing because is he listening no he's just more interested in going and saying hi so chasing him across the campground in my pjs barefoot to get him to come back to the camper so that will never happen again but i am sure that is not my finest moment and slightly embarrassing to have happen Okay, so here is a little bit of a funny story. So as you know, we do travel with our two cats and our furry dog behind me, Alaska. And so what had happened was we were driving down the road, you know, getting ready to pull into our campsite late at night. The, the slide is still in and we didn't realize during the whole travel day, the cat was actually up on the slide sleeping there or whatever she was doing during the trip. And we left the slide in because we got in late at night. And so we get up the next morning to, you know, pull all the slides out and hook up and, you know, get ready for the day. And we pull the slide out, it's going out, it's going out. And all of a sudden we hear this big and then a cat comes running out from the top of the slide and runs underneath the, the bins underneath the bunk beds. It was the loudest <laughs> noise ever. It was so loud in this RV. And so basically we checked her out. Everything was fine. She was okay. Just a little bit scared. Okay, so here is a story that you can probably relate to. And if you can't relate to it yet, it's just because it hasn't happened to you yet, but it probably will because <laughs> Most people that have been on the road for any length of time, the longer you're on the road, just the higher your chances are of having what we called a poopsie. Now, a poopsie is like an oopsie, but with poo. <laughs> so you're gonna have to leave me a comment in the description below and let me know if you've ever experienced a poopsie while RVing, but Here's what happened with us is that we were actually mooch docking at a family member's house. And thank God this happened while we were mooch docking, but we were using our macerator pump 
to be able to actually dump into the septic, which is no problem, works just great. We do it at our home base all of the time and it's really not a problem and it really does work, except for the fact <laughs> that the macerator that we have is a little bit of an older macerator so it actually came with our very first rv that we ever bought used which is over 20 years old and the pipe the sewer pipe that was on the macerator was getting worn well the actual accordion style pipe that was on the macerator while we're in the middle of dumping started to separate and before we could hit that valve it separated all of the way and we literally had a poop geyser like if you've <laughs> seen the movie rv and it was like this most shocking moment of horror because this is a scene you never want to see <laughs> shut off the macerator Oh, crap. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh. So we had to clean up said poopsie. And again, thank God this happened on private land and at a relative's house, which was a little more understanding. But never again do we ever want to have another poopsie as long as we shall live. <laughs> so. Well, let alone a poopsie that involves a pump. Once you're pumping. Right. You know, you don't want to pump the poo. You don't want to. If yeah, you have it, leaky poo, I mean, that's bad enough if you yeah. have leaky poo, but if you're but pumping the poo, poo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it, it was definitely a bad, bad day with RV living in the Grateful Glamper household. So, anyway, needless to say, we learned from our mistake on that, but we now feel like that we have been 100% initiated into RV life having unfortunately experienced our first poopsie. Okay, so the next funny story is we were driving down the interstate. I had my podcast on, you know, headphones in, going down the road, just uh, enjoying ourselves, you know, enjoying the drive. And I look over on my left, there's this guy just like pointing at me, just like, like violently and I, I was thinking he was cussing at me and you know give, giving me the riot act pull over no it's a cardigan but thanks for noticing he was actually just trying to be helpful because he points back towards the back of the rv and i look through this rear view mirror and i see one of our basement compartments is completely wide open and so Finally, once I understand what's going on, you know, the guy's trying to be nice. He's not, you know, cussing at me. He's not, you know, telling me I'm driving like an idiot. He's just trying to help me and tell me that my basement compartment's open. I wave at him and say, thanks, got it. We pull over to the side of the road on the interstate and I go and close my basement compartment. So, moral of the story, now every time it's part of our checklist. I go around the RV, just making sure every single basement compartment is completely closed. Okay, so this next <laughs> funny, embarrassing, whatever you want to call it story is another one that happened because of the cat. Now, I am sure right now that we're going to be getting lots of comments about putting the cats in crates on travel days. <laughs> Needless to say, we have changed our process when it comes to the cats on travel days. So this was pre-process change, but <laughs> we had pulled into a campground for the night and we're just working on getting all set up. And so at this point, because of the first cat incident, <laughs> We kind of were taking at least a visual of where are the cats before we start to put out the slides. So we can't find one of the cats and they're nowhere around the slides. Like we're not finding them in the RV. Hey, hey dog. you been part of the story? <laughs> so we kind of start, you know, calling here, kitty, kitty, all of this stuff. And I faintly hear him meowing. So we're kind of trying to decide where is this meowing coming from? Because obviously the missing cat is somewhere, but we're not sure where. So 
at this point, Ben is actually outside getting things hooked up and he comes in and tells me he also heard them yowling, but where he heard it coming from. It was coming from right around here. And so I take off this, the bra of the RV, open up the front hood, I guess you'd call it. And there is a cat there and it's our cat. And she was meowing, you know, and hysterical. This cat had been in the front of the RV, basically outside, while we were driving down the road. So why we're very thankful the cat did not fall off of the generator that she had obviously perched herself on, now we had to find a way to extract said cat. And let me just tell you, there is not a ton of room between the RV generator and any sort of access point at all. So we got the cat back. She definitely had a strong smell of uh, engine oil, but other than being a little scared was none worse for the wear. And we were able to go on with our night and get settled in and have a wonderful night's rest. So if hearing some of these stories are making you think of some funny things that have happened to you on the road, you're gonna have to leave us a comment below and, and share some of those blooper moments with the rest of us as well, because you know, if we can't laugh at ourselves at the end of the day, then we probably all need to take a very giant chill pill. <laughs> but here is another funny thing slash rookie mistake that we made while we were out within those first couple of years with this particular RV. We have a very large patio awning. This particular awning is a power awning that has a wind sensor that will bring it in if it's too windy, but it does not have is a rain sensor <laughs> and because it's a little bit of an older awning it's actually missing the piece to be able to tilt the awning if there is heavy heavy rain so we are camping at a koa in the savannah georgia area and i am down at the pool with the kids ben is back at the rig getting some work done and there is a major torrential downpour that happened with in seconds. So the kids and I run from the pool area inside of this little kind of activity center, several other families that did the same. And so we're just all kind of chatting and, and talking while this torrential downpour is happening. Ben is back at the RV getting some work done, totally in the zone. So the rain finally lets up. We start walking back towards the RV, the kids and I, and I come to the RV and I see our awning sagging 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 because it is full of rain it's all kind of pooled towards the middle of the awning and my first thought is is oh my gosh this awning is going to break and so i knock on the door i get ben and i'm like hey look and he comes and he just looks and he went back inside and i'm like okay that's weird what is he doing hmm so i'm like well i gotta get this water off and of course you know Ben is formulating a plan. I just don't know he's formulating a plan. So I grab a broom handle and I think, okay, I'm gonna push it up in the middle. The water will go off to the side. No, it's not what happened. All the water comes to one side, completely collapses in the one side of our awning. And then when Ben comes out and looks, the situation is now 10 times worse <laughs> than it was the very beginning. So. We had just a wonderful bonding moment as a husband and wife <laughs> of trying to get the awning put back together. And still to this day, we've got a slight bent arm, but it works, it goes in and out. And so this is now just but a distant reminder of that moment that we communicated perfectly as husband and wife in the moment of a small crisis. I'm gonna go to like Florida Keys. <gasps> Go for a ride, go to the Keys. So we wanted to take a minute real fast to thank Campground Views for sponsoring today's video. Now, trip planning is something that is of utmost importance these days with campgrounds getting a little bit harder to get into. And campgroundviews.com is our new go-to tool when it comes to trip planning, when it comes to looking at the campground before we actually book. Now, 
this is a game changer because we have had more than one instance where we have gotten to a particular site parked our RV only to realize that there's a bush or a rock or something that really just prevents us from putting out our slides or from accessing our storage compartments underneath. In campgroundviews.com is the only tool that we have found that lets you actually see the campsite before that you book it. So we're able to look at those campsites, make sure they're gonna work and see if maybe there's actually a better campsite within that campground that we would rather have that premium site first. So thanks to campgroundviews.com, there'll be a link in the description below because we highly recommend this tool and of course are grateful to them for sponsoring today's video. Okay, back to some more stories. Okay, so this is probably the most embarrassing moment that we have had to date as our veers and i mean this one this is a doozy so for you to understand <laughs> how this could have even happened i need to give you just a little bit of background here so i am sitting right now in the driver's seat and when we set up at a campground i'm going to show you how we used to do it and because of what happened we have now changed but this is how it, it used to go so because we like to flip these seats around when we set up at a campsite, the way that we had set up in the past is this particular steering wheel would be tilted all the way up like this. So this seat would get flipped around. All the way like this. So now this seat is turned around and it is facing this direction. So whomever sitting here, Ben or I can use a laptop or just be part of what is happening out here. And because this is a perfect little space out of the way, it's nice and open under here. We place the cat box, litter box, right down here. Nice, perfect, out of the way. What could go wrong? So now we are in bed. It's about 2 a.m. in the morning and we were awakened by a very, very loud air horn. And we realized that's our air horn. So we were like, what's going on? And so I get up and go towards the air horn and come to find two cats jumping off the steering wheel. And I realized what had just happened. The cats had been walking across the air horn. As one foot hit it, the next foot hit it. There were about two or three loud blasts of the air horn. So the story doesn't end there. The next morning we were getting ready to head out to go uh, doing some adventuring and uh, there was a couple sitting down at the picnic table and I say hey and they start talking to me, just small talk, and they mention to me, did you hear that last night? some rude guy came driving around the campground laying on his horn and honking and i'm like first of all i want to say sorry if it was you guys watching this i apologize i should have been honest and admitted that it was us but i just couldn't come to terms at that moment i just went with it i'm like oh, yeah i did hear that man it was really loud it woke us up too and can't believe what happened that was what a jerk. So now we've learned we do not leave the steering wheel in that tilted up position when we are parked any longer. We have come up with an alternative way of setting up for the night after unfortunately learning that particular lesson the hard way. So you're gonna have to let us know in the comments below what are some of the embarrassing or hilarious things that have happened to you while you're out on the road? And of course, our stories aren't limited to just what we brought to you today in this video. I mean, we love sitting around the campfire with other families and everybody's got some fun stories to tell of things that have happened out on the road. And that's another one of the great fun reasons to live this particular lifestyle is those things that happen along the way but probably the most important takeaway that we want to have you guys walk away from this video with today is when those things happen, learn to laugh at yourself, learn that mistakes are gonna happen, 
and then how do you face those things in a way that's positive and move forward in a way that we can show our kids too, hey, this is how we handle adversity. And when we face adversity or things that don't go our way with this particular attitude, then the outcome is much better than the alternative of kicking and screaming and crying for mom and drinking a bottle of wine and <laughs> now whether you've been living our life our life, our life. you haven't been living our life <laughs> or at least if you have tell me if it gets any better no just kidding <laughs> i can't talk today <laughs> so we're parking we're parking so if so if whatever so i'm gonna put some links for some videos that pretty sure you're going to enjoy here and here Make sure you hit that subscribe button over here. And then we've been posting some fun stuff on Instagram and some fun little video clips called Reels. You can check those out right down here. And if we don't see you on the road or around the campground, we'll definitely see you in the next video.